Okay, this is a picture of my blue sparkle club date kit with the black beauty snare drum. Uh, yes, I have double pedal and some Zildjian cymbals. And I'm going to work on a Steve Gad lick, a brush lick, as you can see. So here we go. I'm going to go to brush mode. There I am. Hopefully we'll get a little picture of me practicing this skill. Welcome to Drum Talk, and today's Drum Talk is going to be about what is drum community in 2021. So the reason why I'm doing this uh, episode of Drum Talk and why I'm talking about this is kind of to say where we're at in the world today of YouTube. And where we're at in the, today in the world of YouTube, this is now January 9th, I think. Um, yeah, it's January 9th, Saturday, January, January 9th. And I woke up and we don't need to talk about where the world is at because the world's in the United States is absolutely off the chain. But YouTube and why I started doing drum covers and all that back in the day has changed considerably in the last four years. And it's been progressing. Everything in life progresses and it brings me back to the question is, what is drum community? Now, I've seen some of my friends right, do some end of the year um, catharsis with their community. And, you know, Earl Drum, Earl Bennett, Earl Drum, Drum Channel has a community. There are guys that watch all my videos. There's guys that just watch some of my videos. A lot of people just fall into my videos. So I'm hoping this is one of those ones that some of you will fall into. But... The idea of drum community wasn't even a thought in my mind when I started YouTube back in 2006 or seven, like it tells me I started YouTube. All I cared about was YouTube was a place I can find music I couldn't find anywhere else on television. Your BETs, your MTVs, your CMTs, they all became commercialized to the point that any of the older music was kind of kind of went away, it just wasn't there. And on YouTube, you could find anything you wanted to find as quickly as possible. Now, one of the people in my life I've talked about, I've traded drums with and stuff, is a guy named Ken Burton. And I used to do a group called Drummers for Jesus. That was something that was in the mid 2000s. It was a international organization and I had a chapter here in West Palm Beach. And I was the chapter leader and we had a small group of guys, somewhere probably between five and 15 at any point in time. But Drummers for Jesus was an opportunity to hang out in this studio and talk about drums, talk about music, talk about drumming in church, talk about drumming for concerts and prison ministry and other things that all of us were doing. And I love the idea of that drum community. So one day we're in that one of those meetings and Ken Burton says to me, he says, Earl, man, you should start doing drum covers on YouTube because it's becoming really popular. And this was 2010 or 11. He says, you should get into this. You can do that. Now, I knew nothing about cameras, nothing about video, um, nothing about Final Cut, of course. And I was kind of like, well, I don't know, maybe I'll do it someday. I was really trying to have a serious recording studio. I was 50 years old. I'm trying to have a serious recording studio. I finally got my studio together 10 years into it. I had done a few records. Um, I played on a few, definitely played on a few albums and people's projects, demos. So this studio was kind of like, I thought this is gonna be something where we'll create music. And it has been a place I've created music. I've created a lot of music in this studio with lots of different people. Um, lots of different opportunities, and I love that aspect of it, but it's not sustainable for an income. But Ken said, no, you should just get into it because you have so much knowledge and start making videos and talking to people. Well, I didn't hear it at that point. 
I didn't even have a camera at that point. This was pre-iPhone, pre-Android. About a year or so later, my son graduates college finally, and um, he's a music major. He's a guitar player, and he says, "Dad, I, I'm going to start a I'm going to start a guitar lesson business, and I want to make some videos for my guitar lesson business. But you know, we should like start shooting videos in here." And we could put them up on YouTube, and there's going to be a market for this. There's really going to be a market. And this was 2010, 11. So when he started talking to me about this idea to do this and start supporting his guitar lesson business, I was very intrigued, but I didn't have cameras, and I didn't have the platform. I didn't understand it. And I didn't understand what YouTube was going to become. Well, some other drummers knew what it was going to become, and they became... Um, Drumeo, Mike Johnston, okay, um, there's a bunch of other guys that are part of that first wave of drum, cover, drum, drum lesson guys, drum cover guys, and they capitalized on it, and they were the first ones in. The first real drum cover person to capitalize on it started to happen like a couple years later with it was a person, Sinna. And then there was the kid, Avery, the, the drummer kid. And all of a sudden, drum covers became popular. And somewhere in the mid-2010s, drum covers became really popular to do. And then what spawned up was some drum communities. And some of my favorite people are the drum communities that I ended up landing in with. And... I didn't start doing YouTube seriously until 2017. Prior to 2017, I would post a video because I got a video camera eventually. I did help my son out a little bit, but he never got his thing off the ground. And his business never became what it could have been. He had the, he had the vision for it. He didn't have the technical prowess to make it happen. Um, I didn't think I had the technical prowess to do videos, but I would learn that, no, I could do videos. If I can learn a recording studio, I can learn how to do video too. I'm not a great video guy, and some of the guys, when I got into this drumming community thing, they were all about the video and playing the songs they loved, but I was never about the video. I was always about playing the songs I loved, the music aspect of it. And what I loved about drum videos was learning how to play songs. And I started to figure that out in 2012 when I was working at this bigger church. It wasn't a huge popular number of congregants, but it was a church that wanted to be bigger, had a great music minister, um, the pastor's wife, Daniel McManus. She could sing her tail off. She was amazing. And I ended up being the drummer there, the main drummer there eventually. And I played on her album. And it was during that season I had to learn a lot of songs quickly each week, new songs to me, and I found out there was a community of drummers that did worship drum covers, and I started watching them. And somewhere in the middle of that, 2013-14, I started making my own drum covers occasionally. Not of worship songs, but usually of things that were drumless tracks from Vic Firth for contests. I did a few of those contest videos. But they never went anywhere because so many guys were better drummers and better at videos than me. So it didn't really go anywhere, and I just sat there. And in about 2016, my wife said to me, you should talk to the camera because people will listen to you talk about drums because you talk about drums all the time, and you have so much knowledge, and guys love listening to that. So why don't you do that? So that's when I started talking to the camera. It was the end of 2016. In 2017, as you all know, was my transition year. I left the company I was working for, and I had a year to kind of figure out my new life, where it was going to go. And 2017 was the year I started doing drum covers. And that's when the drum community found me. And the first guy to find me was a guy named um, Drumman 190. And Drumman 190 just hit a milestone. He hit 5,000 subscribers this week. And... He's been at it for a while. He started as a young drummer. Of course, he was young and inexperienced as a drummer, but I've watched him grow up. He's getting better and better all the time. And his name is Matthew. He didn't go by Matthew when I first met him, but Matthew is becoming a great drummer. 
Um, he's, he's got a great community mindset and he's one of the guys that really promoted community. And I won a drum cover contest in 2017, drum cover of the year. And that's what started my channel to spurt towards growth. Prior to that, I had about 100 subscribers before meeting Matthew. But after I met Matthew, I started to meet all kinds of drummers. And some of the drummers I met were guys like Drum Covers by Bill, Jeff Holden. I'd eventually meet Michael Perry and Tony from All Classic Drum Covers. And these were already established communities. Um, then I would meet Beats by Jay and Michael Johnson and Little Drummer Channel. And all of a sudden I realized that there was a whole community of guys that do drum covers, have fun and enjoy each other. And it was a fun time. 2017, 18 were great years. And then things kind of started to get weird and things do get weird in drum, drum world. And YouTube started to get weird. Matter of fact, in 2018, they changed the way you can monetize things. And they made it harder for people to become, to get those one-off videos that would go viral. Because if you didn't have a thousand subscribers, you weren't gonna monetize a, a crazy video. So it changed the way we did YouTube. And YouTube was trying to change itself. YouTube wants to be a streaming channel that they charge a subscription rate for. And as you all know, if you're watching this video, 59 commercials come into it, you can understand why my people watch my videos for only so long. If I don't monetize this video, maybe some of you will watch it longer, but my opportunity to make any money won't be there. But the truth of the matter is, there's no money in drum covers. And there's very little money on YouTube unless you've got a huge following, a huge subscriber base, and you're putting out content all the time. And the content level has gone up to another level of production, which is higher than this little iPhone. But back in the days when we all started doing drum covers, the older guys that have been doing it for the longer time, the Tonys and the Jeffs and the Beats by Jay, it was a GoPro, a couple GoPros. You know, you could get away with that camera. You could get away with bad sound. It was because that was YouTube standards, but the standards have changed and the world has changed and our drum communities have changed. You know, um, I have lots of new friends. I keep making new friends, guys like Chadwick Perry and Drumaco and um, uh, Tate, Berkey. Um, there's some great guys that I've met on the newer guys that have just come out in the last year, great players. Um, who I enjoy watching their covers. Um, but in actuality, the community thing has been kind of lost. So it makes it makes you wonder, like, why do you do YouTube? And a lot of guys ask me, why are you doing YouTube? And why do you put out so much content? And what's, what's this all about? Well, my goal for YouTube hasn't changed, not one lick since I started. Because I started my YouTube channel to encourage other drummers. That was my goal. I was hoping that my videos would encourage other drummers to pick better cymbals and um, understand the roots of some of the guys that started, that were the, the, the real drum heroes that created the certain sounds that we un in the music I loved, which is the music of the 70s and the 80s. And these were the guys that inspired me to play music. Um, that's why I, I did YouTube was to pour back into the community and to pour back into people. So when I met community, I started to do that. That's where Ask Girl Anything came from. That's where the drum talk started before Ask Girl Anything. And the drum covers became the vehicle for driving people to my channel occasionally because I would put up different drum covers and guys would find them. So what is community really? That's, that's the question. And the truth of the matter is online community is not really, it's not really real community. Real community is what the people you live with at home. It's the people that are in your circle of friends. It's the people you can really have discussion with. YouTube is a pseudo community. And unless you touch these people in the real world, and some of the people I've talked to, I've had conversations with Jeff Holden in the real world. 
I've had conversations with Michael Perry in the real world, phone calls, coming down to my studio, um, Bill, drum covers by Bill, in the real world. Unless you bring them into the real world and you become friends with them, you don't really have community with them. And I will tell you that YouTube has brought me to the place where I have made some friends and new friends. And I'm excited about that aspect of, of, of this. I'm excited about the aspect of making new friends. So what's drum community in 2021? Well, drum community in 2021 is this. You have to do it because you love it. You play drums and you do YouTube videos because you love it. You make friends with those that want to have relationship if that's what you're in it for. If you're in it for money and you think drum covers will lead to money and endorsements, you're probably gonna be sadly mistaken about it. You're better off going to, you, to Instagram and trying to get a bazillion followers on Instagram and maybe you'll get some endorsement opportunities. But unless you've got millions or hundreds of thousands of subs, Endorsements really aren't endorsements. Oh, there's a percentage off. Maybe it's slightly better than you get at Guitar Center or Sam Ash or your local drum shop. But in some cases, you're really not. If you're buying somebody's cymbal product that's not a top line cymbal, you're paying the same price as you pay for Sabian or Zildjian. You're just paying it to a different guy who gives you the clout of being an endorser. And that's the way endorsements work. Unless you can give them something they're not going to give you a product, okay? So what are you giving them? By endorsing their product, they're giving you a slight discount on drumsticks, maybe, if it's one of those really minor drumstick companies who even those guys aren't really giving drumsticks out to people, you know? It's when you get the big boy endorsements, when you get the Vic Firth or you get the Vader or you get the Evans or Remo endorsement, that's when you've really attained something, which is still, you have to be able to give them something to get something back. So the idea of getting endorsements because you've got a drum cover channel probably isn't gonna happen. You have to be able to give more than that. YouTube has to lead to something else. And see, the funny thing was, I never came into YouTube to be a YouTube star. I came to YouTube to teach lessons and to pour into that into other drummers in the community. That's what I did it for. The benefit to me has been I have gotten recording sessions. I have found new friends. I have collaborated on different projects. Um, that has happened because of the YouTube drumming community. So the question is, why do YouTube community then? Why do YouTube, why make drum covers? Why even try working in this crazy environment that we're now in where being seen is becoming harder and harder to be seen on YouTube? Why do we do these things? And the answer to that question has to be, I do this to have fun. See, when I started doing drum covers, I started doing drum covers to teach lessons locally, build a drum lesson business, to have a resume that people could know if they wanted to hire me for something, I could play music, which I do believe is a very important part of being a musician today is people's being able to see you. Now, of course, this guy right here is not going to get a gig in a, in a metal band. I'm not going to get a gig, you know, I'm, I'm going to get a gig with old guys. That's what I'm going to get a gig with. That's the reality of it. I'm not going to get that that gig that's gonna be the prestige gig, road gig, that like there are road gigs today. But, and that's another aspect of this too, by the way, I just hit on something I forgot to say, is that in 2020 with COVID, the YouTube world took another turn. Because in actuality, guys that were trying to make drum covers and stuff and were basically charting their own course, are now charting their course right alongside guys that are established, well-known musicians who have video of themselves playing with amazing artists and have a resume a miles long of what they've done. And now they're showing up on YouTube. So the YouTube community has changed. But the reason I do it is fun. 
Now, I enjoyed having fun with those guys in that drum community, and I enjoy still staying friends with Beats by Jay and Little Drummer Channel and Jeff Holden and Matthew Drumman 190 and Beat and you know um, Drum Covers by Bill and K K Man Can Drum Kelly and my friend Walton and, and who's been a longtime friend. He was one of the first guys to subscribe to me way before I ever had any subscribers, you know. Um, there, there's a couple guys that like found me early on and we just connected early on, way before there was drum community. But drum community and YouTube drumming has to be about fun because the idea that you're going to make money with this is forget about it. You're better off trying to make money like Michael Johnson did switch it to being a tech channel and you might make some money, okay? But in actuality, making a lot of money is not the reason you do this. You do this for the love of music and fun. Now hopefully, and this is the gripe of the Tommy Igos of the world, is that you live in your basement and you play to your basement and you never get out and play in the real world. And Tommy Igo is an example of a drummer my age Okay, he's maybe a couple years younger, not much. And he basically is out there playing gigs in the real world. But he realizes that he has to have an Instagram following so that he can continue to get gigs and sell his books and his lessons. So YouTube and Instagram are nothing more than marketing tools for musicians today. Yes. So if you're a guy just making drum covers, you've got to do it because you love it. Now, I will say I've learned more about my playing, watching myself play drums on YouTube than I could ever learn just sitting here and practicing myself. It helps me to see my shortcomings. It helps me to see my issues. It helps me to see the way I hold the stick, how I look, my facial expressions, um, my foot issues, all kinds of stuff come to, to light when you watch yourself play. But YouTube drumming has to be about fun. Now, for there to be a YouTube community today, that means we all have to support one another as best we can. So I will continue to support the channels, my friends, as best I can. But we all know that our media space is being sucked up by other things, okay? And I don't expect any of you guys to watch all my videos, and I hope you don't expect me to watch all your videos either. But when I can, I will drop a little of encouragement on you because that's my goal as part of my channel. And I plan on continuing to put out content until I don't want to do it anymore when it becomes not fun, okay? And having fun is the reason why I do YouTube videos. Now, talking videos like this, I feel like this is an opportunity for me to give you guys some of my knowledge my background and my 45 years of playing experience. What I've seen and done is just my experience, but we learn from our experiences, our good and our bad. So I glean from guys who talk to the camera. One of my favorite guys that talks to the camera is Bonzolium. Many of you guys know Terry Keating. Great talker. Also, he's one of the reasons why I started talking to the camera because I just love listening to him talk about giant beats and 505s and peisty cymbals and the crazy knowledge he had of his experience buying these things. Love that stuff, okay? From him, I found guys like George Flutus who plays all the John Bonham stuff. And I'm not a John Bonham guy. John Bonham is not my main drummer in life, okay? But by finding George and Terry, I found out George is a jazz drummer, amazing jazz drummer. And I follow him on Instagram and he plays jazz just as good as he plays better, probably better than he plays the bottom stuff, even though he plays the bottom stuff the best I've seen out there. So when you're talking about what YouTube is for us, is it's a wealth of knowledge and people we can go to and learn from. I hope that that's what this channel will be to you, a place you can come, learn, get something from it, ask questions and get a kind response. Now let me say one other thing about YouTube. Kindness is key. And I think that's why Drumman 190's channel has grown, is that kindness is key. He's a kind guy, he cares about people. 
So the kinder we can be towards one another, the better off we're going to be towards one another. And kindness is really important. So I will commit to trying to be as kind to you as possible. Every once in a while, I guess somebody gets a little up under my skin, you know. It's usually the guy that's criticizing something I do, but doesn't show that they even know how to do it. But for the most part, I don't even let those guys bother me anymore. I just kind of blow them off. YouTube, remember this, young, young, if any of you young guys get to watch this, because now it's 18 and above that watch my videos, by the way. But um, if you're a youngster and you get to watch this channel, just remember this, kindness is key. Think about what you say about people and keep it as positive as possible. That's what's going to really shine in this world today. Um, have fun. If you're burning out, and I have some friends that have been burning out on YouTube and stuff, take a break. Know when to take a break. Some of you have encouraged me to take a break. The funny thing was, last year when my son passed away, I needed this to kind of, I needed an outlet. Drumming was the outlet. If I wasn't playing music and I was just sitting in my house depressed, like I could have been, it would not have been a good world for me. This actually gave me life and you guys gave me life. So I thank you all the kudos to everybody that encouraged me and listened to my little rants about my son. By the way, that's Mr. Potato Head. Today is my son. I always sit here and think about playing music with my son. I always do. Because... Community is important. My son was part of my community. My family is important to me. You hear me talk about Mrs. Hammer. You hear me talk about my kids and my grandkids who helped me out on some of my covers. Why is that important? Because community is ultimately important to me. I think we all look for real community. Remember, the drumming community is community, but it's not the real community. So make sure you are part of a real community people that are like-minded because community is about being like-minded so if you're like-minded and you enjoy my videos thank you for watching my channels you want to subscribe awesome but remember have fun now don't look at the ones that make all the money that made all the money and the, all that other stuff and say oh well if i could just be that don't worry about that if you're meant to get there you'll get there if you're not you're not have fun with it enjoy it you know, subscribers to count a little bit, but it's not the end of the world if you don't have a lot of subscribers. What really is the end of the world is if you get so absorbed in something and you let it bum you out and, and give you a bad attitude. So stay positive, stay happy, have fun, enjoy your drumming, learn from others, and hopefully you'll come back and watch another one of these crazy things. These crazy drum talk videos. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great 2021. May it be better than 2020. Bye. <laughs> this is my new DMR 7x14 walnut solid shell one ply walnut snare drum. It's got uh, 16 lugs on it, 8 on the top, 8 on the bottom die cast hoops and a Dunnet R2 snare throw off and Dan at DMR has done a beautiful job of making this drum and it sounds awesome and I'm going to take off my other DMR snare drum, my hammer 6.5 by 14 cast aluminum snare drum and I'm going to throw up the brand new DMR walnut just so you can get a feel for what it sounds like. And this is not mic'd, it's not processed, but it's kind of a middle tuning, so. Thanks for a great snare drum.